Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us here on Midday Kentucky. And a happy Friday. I'm excited for our ladies' show we yeah, have going on I today. Know. Girl power again. Uh, it's we're going to take a little break getting in getting into the weekend, but he'll be back here on Monday. But it's nice to have Elise here at the table. I know. Welcome happy to Elise. be back. Yeah. And it's a big day to have Elise because we only have a few more hours of summer, right? It's about yes. to be fall. 402. That's the magic number. That's when fall officially arrives. But it's not going to be feeling like fall. Okay. It's temp temperatures are still going to be in the upper 80s. So very much like summer. Over Is the that next a holiday days. for meteorologists? Do you look forward to the time that sure, seasons change? Sure, why not? Change? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do. I love fall, so I look forward to it. <laughs> are you going to do anything to celebrate and get outside this weekend? I'm um, definitely going to try to hit up the night market this evening. So that oh, could be a little be bit fun. of a celebration. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've already decorated for fall. So. You were, I know. I put a <laughs> pumpkin with a witch hat on my door yesterday, and I thought, too soon. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lisa, you're ready for Halloween, like the outfit. Oh, well, thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I saw it, and um, I got it from Clothes Mentor, of course, and they, I mean, she picked it out. I would have typically never picked something like this, honestly. That's I'm usually beautiful. pretty. Beautiful. Well, I, thank you. I, I, I thought too, so I like too. it. Well, thank you very much. I, I'm glad that they picked it out for me. What are you up to this weekend? Anything fun you know, with your kids? I you know, I think I'm just going to hang out with the kids. Um, if it cools off in the evenings uh, at all, I would like to do a little fire and out in the fire pit on the back patio. And I don't do think you'll. I stuff. don't think it's going to be hoodie weather at, okay. the fire, at, the, yeah. at the fire pit. But I think you you can still get outside and enjoy that. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's good, good crazy because we had a pretty mild summer and now we're getting into fall and. Like yeah, 90 yesterday, mother, right? mother Nature missed the memo. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving 90. it. I'm loving it. I still love the warm weather right yeah. now. So I'm we'll happy. remember these <laughs> days when we're complaining about oh, the yeah. snow. Exactly. Uh, well, I wanted to start the show off with um, something I saw online, and I think we hear this a lot that don't come off too interested when mm -hmm. you're starting to date someone or desperate. And this was just a psychologist talking about why people. Um, back away. You shouldn't show that you're too interested because she says first they pull away because you're scaring them. <laughs> but they're scared of being vulnerable, she says, that the faster you go, the faster the relationship progresses. And then uh -huh. you may push someone too fast to a state that they feel too vulnerable and they'll push back. Yeah. Then she says, on the other hand, <laughs> Half of people perceive that as desperation, and then that's why they lose attractiveness to you. So, uh -huh. um, I wanted to know when you first met Doug, did you play hard to get, or <laughs> how, did, how did that go? <laughs> I'm trying to think, you know. Um, not really. I mean, I was from a small town, so, you know, I, I had limited options. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Doug was like this shining light, you know, okay. and I was, you know, yeah, I pounced. I mean, you know, I did. But, um, and, and, you know, but we hit it off immediately. So, okay. you know, I never really worried about all these little nuanced things, you know. I, I feel like you need to kind of be true to yourself and how you feel. And if you're feeling that, then go with it, you know. And yeah. and if they if it scares them or whatever, then so be it. Maybe they're not the right person for you, and you find out pretty quickly at that point. But if I mean, if you're really into somebody, go for it. I don't I don't like overthinking a relationship yeah. like that. You know I know I mean? it gets tricky. You know, we're both in the dating world, and then it's uh, do you call? Do you text? I don't know. But but you yeah, you're I think you make a great point, though. Like, there's, I think, just too much now involved with the whole dating process and the first impressions. Like, it, it, exactly, be be yourself. I yeah. mean, she's making it sound like you kind of have to find a happy medium. But it's like, just just be yourself. Yeah, just That's do all it. That just in roll end. with it. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And, and everything will work out. You know, either way, either either you will scare them to death and they'll run <laughs> for the door, or you know, they're going to be like, wow, she's really into me, and and it'll progress that relationship in a direction that you might want it to go. So, so you think just come out right away. Oh, right out the gate. I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying you like be totally psycho about it, but okay. I mean, you know, I, I think that jump to the proposal. Yeah, I mean, you know, within the week, I would say. <laughs> That's funny. Time. We need to meet those guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, we have another single people uh, topic here. What's going okay. on? <laughs> Oh, with my, yeah, okay, so I came across this article, I thought it was funny, um, about um, trying to get rid of a gut. And if you've got a little bit of extra poundage in the gut area, here are some uh, items that you can get rid of in your life that will help get rid of the gut. So the first one is drinking diet soda actually contributes to your gut. They're saying to get rid of it. Well, sure, it's got all the fake sugar in it, the aspartame and stuff. I just, that surprised me. I loved it. I love Diet Coke, and I gave it. Yeah. A, I gave it up. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Well, that's why I have such a flat stomach. <laughs> <laughs> it's hidden under clothing. <laughs> but you know what I mean. 
mean, it's like, you know, that surprised me, but they did say that people that drink Diet Coke tend to eat more calories throughout their day. Hmm. And so huh. that's why it ends up that you have a, a little bit of a bigger oh, gut there. Okay. And then the next one is eating out too often. That's my and big so, problem. And that's tough for everybody, I think. It's, it, that's a tough thing. Um, but they said that, you know, you should, if you're out, anything that says breaded, fried, crusted, oh, yeah. smothered, <laughs> or creamed. Is that not good? Not good, no. I, and of course, I mean, it tastes good. It's good. You know, you're going to love it. Yeah, I think definitely the smothered part yeah, like, yeah. is the red flag there. <laughs> so we need, we need okay. to focus on grilled, broiled, or sauteed. Oh, so, okay. All right, those are the words to look for on the menu. And then um, also the next one, being lazy on weekends. Too. Hmm, okay. They said that that can contribute to weight gain. They said that people that sleep, they go to bed late and then sleep until noon and eat their <laughs> first meal at that point, they're eating more calories throughout their day overall. And this is proven in a study, research from Northwestern University. Um, they did a study on this and they, they showed that people that were staying up late, waking up late in the day, are eating more calories on the average than people that go to bed before midnight and wake up at 8 o'clock. Well, I'm wondering if it, hmm. is it the time frame that they have because they're kind of lessening their time frame of being awake, so they're trying to just pack the same pack amount of calories the, yeah. in. Yeah, I know. So, hmm. I know. I, it was interesting. Okay. And then um, fighting stress with sugar. I this is that. another mm -hmm. big contributor, and you know a lot of people do. And I mean, stress levels cause—I mean, stress causes the cortisol levels to rise in our body, and which is which contributes to um, wanting to crave sugars. So they said that that you have to be very aware of it and try not to grab those sugary okay. sweets when you're under a lot of stress. Last one is smoking. Um, obviously, <laughs> smoking yeah. doesn't really, it's, you know, it's not good for, mm -hmm. for your body all the way around. But they're also saying that smokers tend to have a larger waist circumference than non-smokers due to more abdominal fat and less muscle mass, uh, which is a direct result from the smoking. So mm -hmm. they said... You might want to give up the cancer sticks. <laughs> My biggest problem is I know what I should be doing. I yeah. just struggle to do it. You know, I know I shouldn't be ordering the battered and fried. I know I should be sleeping and not it's eating just, right before so I go to bed. Oh, is. man, it's so hard. It is. I mean, it's I can hard. indulge every once in a while in something like that, yeah. but I understand not going kind of yeah. overboard yeah. with yeah. it. And right. I think portion control is always, yeah. you know, that's the key element, too. Oh, we all yeah. struggle. <laughs> yeah. Well, it I, is a struggle. I do want to talk about this next topic. It's kind of about first impressions in the first day. Dating. We have uh, a, a dating guru, more okay. to say. Her name is Nadia Essex, and she kind of weighed in on this, and she said, you know, this is kind of for all the single people out there. First dates, those first impressions can be really nerve-wracking, and she kind of gives some tips of what you should be doing. Uh, first, she says, for the single ladies, you need a single woman, a single wing woman, uh, to kind of help you out there. So it's always, I guess, good to have... On your dates? Uh, well, no, I guess oh. just if you're out with <laughs> okay. a friend, have a single oh, wing okay. woman to kind of help you around. No, no, no. I was like, that would be really <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I guess to get you a date. Oh, okay, <laughs> to get the date first. Yes. Hello, but, Katie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're not just single. I don't want you to go. <laughs> Luck. She was actually <laughs> saying something about if you don't have a single wing woman with you, the vibes of the in a relationship wing woman will kind of like rub off and it'll like kind of mix those vibes, like mix up with your single vibes and really kind of throw the whole thing off. Like if you're looking for somebody oh. out and about. So, so you really okay. don't, so that's want, a, you don't want a married woman. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. You don't want a married no. woman to hang out with. Oh, but she says so prejudice. Um, I can't even stand it. Just some tips are choose the perfect venue, skip the makeup, uh, dress to impress, keep conversation light. Um, she was saying something about, you know, go out for dinner instead of coffee, it just shows a little bit more of an interest and they're taking a little bit more time to, you know, kind of, I don't want to say wine and dine you, but make sure that you're being fed and watered instead of just being like, here's a <laughs> <Fed> coffee. <and> <laughs> <watered>. <laughs> That's the verbiage she used, though. She said fed and watered. So it just, I think, shows a little bit more interest when they want to take you out to a dinner instead right. of just being like, hey, here's, here's a pumpkin spice latte. Well, yeah. so and they're, <laughs> they're investing money. I'm convinced. Exactly. Yes, it is. I think if you already know the person that, that you're going on the date with, but what do you guys <laughs> think of a, a first date? Maybe your friends have set you up or you uh -huh. met online or anything. She says coffee is cheap. She but did, what about yeah. like happy hour or right. drinks or something? <laughs> I don't know. I think like sitting down for dinner, what if you meet and there's no connection, but I've committed to a well, whole I mean, dinner? I guess it doesn't need to be a fancy restaurant. Okay. You could go for tacos or something and mm -hmm. then go for a cocktail or something. I yeah. just think it would be awkward eating in front of yeah, another person Yeah, I think that it's you weird. I think it's weird for you know? a first date. Yeah. I don't think a full dinner is... Because I'm a needed. sloppy eater. Maybe something <laughs> light. In my opinion, I'd say something okay. light. She uh, makes it yeah. sound like some romantic candlelit thing almost. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, mean, I think that's her. That's her. Right. She'd want that. But, <laughs> yeah, I'd be fine with just like, hey, let's get 
co uh, tacos in a cocktail or something. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so, or dinner at the night market. Yeah, yeah that's that's Six dollars. Um, <laughs> but she was also saying, you know, skip the makeup. Uh, don't go like full face. So we probably would okay. like back off a little bit from our TV makeup too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I like to wipe it off when I go home. I saw um, she said don't wear red lipstick too. Yeah, she right? said that men kind of equate that with sex off the bat. So yeah. like, you know, maybe don't later on, but okay. like for unless you're the desperate, lipstick. I guess. <laughs> yeah, and put on the red. Yeah. <laughs> But of course, you're saying on. dressed in press, you know, you always want to maybe have that simple black dress or simple black heels. You mm -hmm. don't need to spend an arm and a leg on them, but it's also always a nice thing to kind of have. And keeping the conversation light, you might not want to dive into politics and things okay. like that. <laughs> you know? um, but, you know, just talk about interests and maybe what movie is out or yeah. something like that. So just, yeah, keep it light. So those are, those are some tips to follow. I liked her clothing tips. She was saying you have to go with the rule of legs or chest, but only one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. wear something that shows a little leg and is covered up or little cleavage and and longer but not makes both. sense I think I subconsciously think of that but yeah you think that's a good rule yeah I guess so I mean the guy would be an overload at that point <laughs> if they had both going on and if you have red <laughs> lipstick <laughs> yeah, well then exactly. I heard I heard something else that said either you play up your lips or you play up your eyes you don't do oh, both so yeah okay yeah, you can yeah match those I two. guess we'd have to tone it down <laughs> <laughs> those are good tips but I don't have to wear makeup okay. I mean, I'm married I'm already you know I'm tied in so. all right but good luck with those <laughs> thank you thank you we'll keep you update. <laughs> I guess we can be wing women for each other based on that. There we go. <laughs> I still think I would make a good wing woman though. Okay. Well, even the three of us can go. Yeah. There you go. There we'll do go. that. <laughs> uh, well, up next, I wanted to get your guys' take on this. Now that we're talking about Scarefest and Halloween coming mm -hmm. up around the corner, there's a town in Canada making headlines that they have announced that they are banning anyone 16 or older from trick-or-treating. You cannot wow. do it. And if you're caught trick-or-treating, there's essentially a $200 fine from the town. Uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think about this? What age does trick or treating need to stop? How old is too old? I yeah, mean, I think I, I think sixteen is a good cutoff. I, I don't think you? Think you're okay through high school. You're still. I mean, you're you're a kid, but you're a big kid. Once you're in college, though, I, I think <laughs> I'd draw the line on college. Um, but I, I mean, a curfew is always great. You don't want them yeah. getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. But finding them two hundred dollars, I think that might be a little excessive. That's a little excessive, but little I think bit. they're trying to make the point too. And you said um, about not wearing a mask or anything mm -hmm. like they can't be. You know, and I think that's good too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Halloween's kind of free freaky anyways, you know, you just right. want to try to keep, you know, everyone kind of in control yeah. when the lighter evening And time. I think trick-or-treating is, I don't want to say more so geared toward little kids, but I mean, you yeah. want to make it still enjoyable for them and not yes. have the older kids kind yeah. of I mean, over. it does kind of bother me when older kids uh, would come to the door, you know, trick-or-treat. I mean, we have to buy, I, we lived in a neighborhood, I mean, yeah. we had tons of kids. It's expensive. It is yeah. expensive. Yeah, for the little kids. Yes, and so, I mean, we would have, and then plus we would have to take our kids out, so we would set a big bowl of candy out in okay. front of the door and just, you know, please take two or three right. or whatever, mm -hmm. no big deal. But a lot of times it's those older kids that yeah. are coming in and dumping the whole with their bucket into there. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't bother me, um, older kids that come around that are actually participating in Halloween. They've put time into their costume, yes. they're dressed up, yes. they're having fun. That's true. It's that the kids true. that come around with their pillowcase, no costume, right. and they just want the candy. <laughs> right. So I, I think that's kind of pushing it. And you're like, come on, I spent money on this. <laughs> but I'm sure, you know, if a 16-year-old knocks on your door and she's in a decked out princess costume, yeah. that's fine. You know, right. so I think, I think if you're participating the way you should, yeah. Just being a big kid, I think I think that's fine. But right. I kind of like I kind of like this rule of sixteen and below yeah. just to monitor it. And you parents. know, if they're wearing the costume, then it can kind of hide their age too. <laughs> yeah. So you know, they might be able to get away with something there yeah. if they're wearing the costume. But I agree, I like when they put effort into the costume when they're older kids yeah. and not just walking yeah. through the door and I, I think that, and I jeans. think that that's what gets me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, are we doing another topic here? Are we? Do we Sam? have time? <laughs> Do we have time? We might have well, a little time. Well, don't say anything. All right, well, I'm, okay, <laughs> one minute. Lisa, tell us about hospital well, boredom. Yeah, okay, this is, um, it, you know, this is interesting. Um, people that are in a hospital for an extended amount of time, mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest uh, problems with these people when they're in the hospital is boredom. And boredom can actually result in and lengthening the time that they're in the hospital because they're not getting well. Their, their, their mental well-being is not there to help them get out of the hospital even faster. So what do you all think about that? I, I, I thought it was an interesting read and I thought that you know when they talked about the boredom, it, the boredom then leads into depression. And I know with elderly people that's really important to try to prevent that type of boredom uh, mm -hmm. from settling in. But they said it can even happen with younger folks as well. But they said that like stimulating their minds, like adult coloring books, um, pen pencils and papers for drawing, or just any type of games like word puzzle games, mm -hmm. things like that to keep the 
mind active will help prevent them from mm -hmm. getting that depression from suddenly. Like and I like all the different programs that uh, therapy dogs will come around yes, or see yeah. kids and things like that. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense and it's yeah. good to keep that in your mind if you know someone that's in the hospital. Exactly. Maybe actively yeah, engage them. Exactly. Uh, not only visiting them, but maybe even take them like a little coloring book or a little, you know, whatever. Yeah, something you know, fun. Yeah, a little word game or something like that. At least so. just give them hope to kind of continue their recovery. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, stay with us coming up after the break. We're learning more about the largest equestrian event. It's called Odeo. 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 Odeo.